Now uh, we have seen how LANs can be extended and also acknowledge that wired local area networks are built not with collision domains for a shared link but rather point-to-point -point links to a switch. I would like to show you how to build such a node. So we talk about multi-link networks and this is a single node case. Of course, we will in later module extend that to multi-node case. The switch is an interconnection of links. It takes incoming links and it switches frames to the outgoing links. So what functions are needed in the switch? You can assume that the data links are given so that correctly received frames should be forwarded meaning that on the input side the frames will be received and they will be checked and then uh, they will be acknowledged back to the sender of the frame and the frame will be put in, in a buffer to be forwarded to the outgoing link. So one function is to take the incoming frames and to sort them for the outgoing links. So that means that we have to find the correct output based on the destination address in the frame. This as we have seen for the extended LANs, we, we have to learn the mapping of the destination address to the output port. The sorting of frames depend on the structure of the address. And I will show you layer 2 structure, meaning that we have data link addresses, typically 8 to 2 addresses of 48 bits. And I will show you layer 3 addresses in terms of uh, IP version 4 addresses. Once the frames have been sorted according to the output, they need to be moved from the input to the output link. This goes through an internal network that we refer to as a switch fabric. And since there could be more frames arriving from output port than what can be transferred immediately, the surplus will be kept in a buffer. The reason can be that simply by, by chance there are more frames arriving that are destined to the same output or it could be frames arriving on one input going to one output but the output link is slower than uh, the input link or that the output link is subjected to flow control from the receiving end of that outgoing link. So let's first look at data link layer switching. This is inside the box of the switch. So we have to the left the physical layer that comes in and gets terminated the physical layer delivers frames up to the data link layer. The frames must be checked for CRC to see that they're correct, otherwise they uh, should be dropped. And of course what I have not shown in here are the acknowledgements being sent back to the, to the sender of the frame. The correctly received frames will be put in a frame buffer. This is the buffer for which you design the flow control so that it doesn't overflow. This buffer is able to hold all the frames of one window in a slider window flow control. And then after the frame buffer, the forwarding functions that I mentioned to bring frames from input output links will occur. So we have now moved one step to the right. We shifted out the physical link, we're not interested in that, and we have the frame buffer now most to the left. So the forwarding function takes the first frame in a buffer it extracts the destination address and looks that up in the forwarding table as we have seen. The forwarding table provides the port to which the frame should be forwarded and there is a demultiplexer that will be set by this information to the correct output and the frame will then be transferred from the frame buffer via the demultiplexer to the switch fabric and eventually will come to, to the output port. How does the address lookup work? Let's take an example with IEEE 802 addresses. So we know that the addresses are 48 bits, meaning that we could address almost 2 to the power of 48 different computers. But to any one switch, there will be only be tens or perhaps hundreds of connected computers. So we don't have to have an address table of size 2 to the power of 48. We wouldn't even be able to build such a large table. So the addresses are used very sparsely, and we have to find a function that compacts the ad used addresses so that we can have them all in a smaller table of the size of the number of computers rather than the size of the address space itself. The sorting function depends on the address structure. 
the addresses are allocated to devices by the manufacturer in NIEEE 802. There's no structure to the address. It can be seen as a random string of 48 bits, but it's of course unique for each connected device or computer. So here I illustrate addresses that are the ones that should be in an address lookup table in the switch. So I split the address into 24-bit segments. We put on the x-axis the first 24 bits and on the y-axis the other 24 bits. So we see from the address space that there are very few points that need to be put into the address lookup table in order to forward frames. If we cannot build a table where we take the 48-bit addresses as keys to find the port address, how should we do this? Well, we can compute the hash function of the 48-bit addresses. For instance, we can compute a 16-bit hash from the 48 bits. And I think you all know examples of how we could compute 16 bits out of a, of a long bit string of data. We could do, for instance, a CRC 16. That means that if we look at the hash, we now instead have an address space which is 2 to the power of 16, roughly 65,000 different entries. And for that, we can build a forwarding table where we take the hash as input key, and then for each hash, we get the port number. There could be hash conflicts where two addresses get hashed to the same 16-bit value, and we have to include some mechanism for handling such conflicts. When we looked up the 16-bit hash that has been computed from the 48-bit address, then we get output ports and we can sort the frames according to the port where they should be sent. There is another way of doing address lookup, and that is to sort the addresses of the output. For each output, we have one set of addresses. So they could be zero or up to all addresses that should be destined to one particular port. If there are zero addresses, of course, that port is not used. And if all addresses are listed for a port, then, then each frame will go out on that port. Most likely will addresses be spread over the outgoing ports. When a frame comes in, you take the destination address, and then you see if that address is member of any set for any port. And once you find that an address is a member of, of the set for one particular port, that is the port that the frame should be forwarded to. So that's an alternative method to the hash in order to do address lookup of mapping address to port. So the port number sets the demultiplexer, and this is the real switching function inside the switch, because that determines to which output the frame is going to be forwarded. So the demultiplexer connects to a small network. We refer to such a network as a switch fabric. There are different ways of implementing it. And here I've just shown it as interconnecting arrows. At the output port, the multiplexer has to be set to the input from which the frame should be received. Here we have to consider that there could be several inputs which have frames destined for one and the same output. So there has to be a buffer management and a signaling from the multiplexer to the input link to indicate which of the input links can forward a frame and which input links have to keep the frame in the buffer waiting for the output to be ready. We refer to this as buffer management. And then following the multiplexer, the data link functions of the outgoing link start. The buffer management has an impact on the performance of the switch. I show two examples here. If you have two frames destined for distinct outputs, then both of them can be forwarded through the switch fabric. And per time instance, you would get two frames through the switch. If you have two frames destined for the same output, one frame will be forwarded and the other frame has to wait. So the task for the buffer management is to maximize the service from the input buffers. To compute the performance of the switch, we have to make assumptions about the frames are buffered. Here I've assumed that, that we have five full buffers on the input side. One frame is selected, the other frames wait in a buffer. The waiting frame blocks frames that could be delivered to free output. So say, for instance, in the right figure, that following both frames 1 in either input, there are frames destined to 0. 
then if that frame to zero for one of the inputs could jump over the frame destined to one, then you could deliver the frame to zero at the same time as one of the two frames will be delivered to output one. This effect, when a frame is waiting and it's blocking a frame that goes to another free output, is called head of the line blocking. Here in this case, with two inputs and two outputs, it reduces the utilization to 75% of the full capacity per port. This worsens for larger switches. If you let n, the number of inputs and outputs, go towards infinity, then you can compute that the output utilization is 59% of the link rate. To avoid this head of the line blocking, there are other buffer structures that allow 100% utilization of the output links. We can omit the FIFO input buffers and we can instead have random access to the frames in the frame buffer and take out the uh, frames that, that could go to ideal output if the first frame is blocking. Usually these techniques require faster memory for the buffers and higher speed or larger switch fabrics to avoid head of the line blocking. In the next part I will show you network layer switching. I will show you the similarities with the switching at the data link, and I will also show you the differences, mostly related to the address at the network layer.